them. And now, uh, it's working. Okay, so we did lose uh, a little bit of the work that we did last time due to a crash. So always remember uh, the quick save is uh, you can hit nine, and then I'll go ahead and just quick save as you work. Uh, in your preferences here, if you go to quick save, the maximum duration is set here. 20 is usually fine, um, but can't hurt to you know do that periodically. I'm gonna go ahead and let's turn on X symmetry for his body here just by tapping the X key. And we'll go ahead and uh, maybe drop those shoulders in just a tad. And on his legs here, I am gonna, th well, I guess his legs aren't that thick. I am gonna kind of thin his legs out just a bit here. That should work. And then we're going to, where's my, get my OBS out of the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna thicken his arms up just a tad. There we go. Make sure my volumes are correct as we're working in the round here. And then, so we made the new bandolier and we've got his blocked out pants. Oh, we do need to fix uh, this chain here. So. Let's go, let's alt tap his pants here. I'll go back to the body and I can see a little bit better. So now this chain, uh, ideally, do we still have our chain? You know what I think we do. So I hit the comma key, go to brush, and we can go to insert IMM, and we have our chain brush from last time. And let's go ahead and use that. So I'm gonna have these in place, and that's, a, that's about where they're gonna need to be. I'm gonna move this one out just a tiny bit here. Let's go to unmash mesh center. Rotate these around just a bit. So I need the chain link to meet up here and to meet up here. So let's go ahead and redraw this one real quick. We're gonna go ahead and delete that. Let's alt tap the body again and we'll go ahead and duplicate that. And hold on control shift. Let's go ahead and get rid of his arms so we can see a little bit better. And his hands. There we go. And his gauntlet. Now, control shift, slice curve, and you know, we want the chain to be, to go about right here. So we're gonna put it right down the middle of where we want that chain to go. There we go. And I guess let's go ahead and do an auto groups. Control shift drag, control W. Now you just have two poly groups, stroke, frame our poly groups border here. And then we can hit B. Uh, Grab our chain tool, turn off X symmetry. We don't want it to overlap. And then now we're gonna turn off line and we're gonna make that a little bigger. There we go. So this might actually work. If it doesn't, you can take this and you can kind of drag it along here. And so now we've got this one going this way, this one going this way. I think that'll work a little bit better. And okay, so we'll go ahead and tap off. Actually, before we do that, let's do a little, well, we're gonna put pants on him. Let's turn those pants back on. And yeah, it's fine. So we'll say, although it does seem like it's coming off him quite a bit. Let's do a little bit of depth. Let's drop that depth down to like zero. That's a little too far in. Let's say 12. Maybe not. Maybe I should have just left it alone. Fair enough. All right, so we'll go ahead and tap off of here. We'll go ahead and say split mass points. And then we'll go back to our original, our uh, sliced mesh here, which would be this one. We don't need this one anymore. We go ahead and delete that. So now we got our chain in the right So we have a chain that goes down and a chain that goes down and then I go through these loops. I'm gonna go ahead and go to polygroups, auto groups. We're gonna grab this one, invert it, this one, this one. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And now we need to move these out a little bit more. So we can go to the side here, rotate this around. And then same thing for this one. Something like that. There we go. And you know what, just for housekeeping, let's go ahead and move these two links down together. Oh. Modified topology, delete hidden. There we go. 
So now hold on shift, turn everything else back on. Now let's go over here and we'll fix this little leather bracelet thing. He's got on one side. And so for our reference here, we've got this one. This one's pretty thick and it also looks like it does, it's not like spike spikes. This one has spikes, uh, but we're gonna stick with the uh, truncated little uh, knobs on there. And then we did do this last time, but you know, it's pretty easy to do again. Now there's a couple different ways we could go about it. We can go the IMM route or the insert mesh route, or let's go ahead and, you know what, let's also do this. We can do this and we can go to um, polish by features just to even that geometry out just a bit. So I'm not over here messing with it too much. I still want it to be around. There you go. So like we did last time, um, let's do a, um, we're gonna duplicate this off. I think this is what we did last time. Hold on, control shift. We want to isolate just the uh, ring here in the middle. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then we can maybe do every other one. One, two, three, four, one, two, Oh yeah, that is what we did last time. So every other one, we're gonna say U and U. We're just holding down Alt with our Z modeler brush, BZM. And we're just going around and we're making every other one uh, a polygroup. And then this one down here, we're actually going to paint another polygroup. So now you have three polygroups on here, just holding on Control Alt. And we're gonna isolate just these white ones here. And we're gonna say, I mean, I guess we can just do this. We'll do delete hidden. I was gonna say, well, we should probably make these perfectly square, but we don't need to do that, I don't think. So control W. So now let's go ahead and go out of edit mode, hit control N, say always switch. And we're gonna go in here to our, start with the cylinder. And we'll go down here to initialize. We're gonna say, uh, let's say 12 and four, make poly mesh 3D, hold down control and alt W. Go down here, Alt, Alt set that one, and we'll scale this down. That sounds about right. And then Control, Alt, and then Control, drag down. And now I've got this. Let's go ahead and run a crease tolerance, and we'll go ahead and crease this one too. Crease, edge loop complete, and then we'll hit D. And then we'll say uh, crease level three, smooth so to before. Does that look about right? Looks like this top piece is a little bit more scaled in. Something like that. So uh, we can do Shift D, turn that off. We're gonna go to B, create insert mesh, new, brush. Oh no. Every once in a while when I turn my computer on, I don't know if it's my graphics card or this monitor, but now it's starting to turn off uh, out of nowhere. Put that depth, um, I guess we could have left that at like 64, wherever it was. I think that'll work fine. And then uh, brush, create, uh, nano mesh brush. We're gonna go back here to our wrist here. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can always go back in and change this mesh uh, and also the position of the mesh if I need to. And if I do an IMM, uh, I'm gonna have to go through and redraw the IMMs or um, you know, manually move every single one of them around. And this is just a little bit easier. So insert nano mesh on a poly, no, on poly group all, there we go. And go to our nano mesh properties, and we can say, I don't need to show placement. I'm just gonna kinda look at this. I think that'll be fine. I think that's about right. I can always go through here. I can say I can fit it to it, or I can fill it. Proportional is fine, because we want it to maintain its shape no matter what the shape of the overall um, square is. And I can also go through here and I can move these things around. I can scale them, and I can also go in here and edit my mesh. So if I, if I ever need to just go through here and like if I need to like thin these bases out, I can just do that for all of them. Go out of edit mesh, there we go. Uh, and then we can also go through here, we can change our depth and our rotation. And we'll say Z offset here. We'll see if we need to pull that out just a bit. Those look big. There we go. And then on our bracelet here, we're gonna say increase level of, let's say three, smooth set to about four. I'll go ahead and increase uh, our poly groups there. And, and on this one, if we turn on show placement again, we can see these um, 
polygons here, and then on this one we can say Q mesh a single poly, and then just hold down Shift just to push those things back if we ever need to move them around. And then we'll go ahead and turn off Show Placement. Alrighty, so the other thing we did is we were in here and we went to a BI Brush Insert Clothing M Buckle Type 2, and this is a kind of a stopgap. I don't think this is what we're going to end up using, but we can go ahead and put in like an indication of some detail that we might find in this area. So we'll go ahead and say split mass points. I'm going to go through here, make this a little bit easier to use. I'm going to hover over this one. I'm going to say insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and just get rid of these ones here. And now I'm going to go through and hold down control and alt, W. We can push this one out, and we can push this one out and still maintain the overall form. And then on this bracelet here, I think that'll actually work just fine. But if we want to control these loops a little bit more, we can go in here to insert single edge loop. We can put one. All right, let's do this. Isolate that one, delete hidden, Q mesh, polygroup all, just so I can have a little bit of an easier time. Oops, putting some loops in here. Put one here, and we'll put one. I guess that one will work just fine. So I'm going to move these edges back. And then I'm going to put in this one right here that will kind of control it. And then this one I'm going to slide this edge back a little bit. And now I can slide this. And we'll put in insert another single edge loop here. And now we can Q mesh a single poly, hold down shift. And now I can just, you know, pop this out as needed. Something like that. And we can go back here to crease PG, dynamic, and if we want to, let's go into solo mode here, and we could even crease edge loop complete here and here if we need to. And that'll be close enough for government work for that for now. Cool. Hey everybody, let me move this thing down. Let me get a drink here. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Uh, how to make an array mesh follow a curve. Um, you're going to want to watch the last live stream we did. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to be an array mesh, it's going to be a nano mesh, but that's exactly what we did for this bandolier here. If we go on here, it's actually kind of what we just did for the bracelet. If we turn on show placement here, you can see that all of these bullets are on this uh, path here. So basically what you do is you create an IMM curve brush, which is planes, and then on those planes you draw out your nano mesh. So now it's essentially an array mesh that you can go in and you can edit these meshes as needed, and it'll also follow your curve. And there goes my monitor again. Oh my god. Um, if you ever want to learn Substance Painter, the one on YouTube Quick Start Play, this is still relevant from the new version? Not even close. It's actually really, really old. Um, but uh, there is, I want to say like Substance Academy or something like that. Yeah, Substance Academy. There you go. So in here, there's like, um, there's a couple of like new features and stuff, but then there's also like Learn. Substance of Popular Course, Substance Painter. And then in here, getting started with Substance Painter 2018 Foundation. So check this one out. And I'll get you up and running. I don't even know all the new features. I haven't been in Substance in a while. Let's see. Uh, Jack says, what do you think about Blender 2.8? Uh, I've been using it for a while. It's nice. Uh, I need to put some more hours into it. I'm, I'm not real uh, <laughs> proficient in it just yet, but... Um, so uh, if you want to restart your graphics server while using Windows Shortcut is Win Control Shift B. Let me. Is that going to mess up my OBS or anything? Oh my goodness. Well, at least we had our guy saved. So what we can do with this one? I'm not sure. If you if you do have like some sort of a gremlin in your ZBrush file. Um, We can we can kind of clean that out. So let's take a look at this here. So, luckily because we had him selected, he is going to be in our uh, recovered Z tools here. So we have a Z tool here, and I'm not positive what ZBrush doesn't necessarily like about this, but one thing you can do is 
let's do this. We're going to lose the bullet. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to clone this bullet off here. And we're going to go to, let me see if there's a way I can get out of this easily. Let me think, let me think. So we've got that sitting there. We want to go and do, okay, yeah, we can do this. So under nano mesh, wherever that is, under nano mesh here, I'm going to go into edit mesh and we're going to look at this bullet. We're going to hit B, create insert mesh, new. And you know what, just while we're here, let's go ahead and say brush, create, nano mesh brush, save as. I'm just going to throw this into the IMM brush folder. So ZBrush 2019. Z brushes, oh, IMM, and we're going to call this, there we go. So now we'll go out of edit mesh because I know we're going to lose that subtool. Delete. Now another thing we can do, let's go back here, let's go ahead and uh, we'll start making IMM brushes from all this stuff. So I'm going to go into edit mesh on this one. And let's hit uh, B, create insert mesh append. Okay, and then we're gonna say brush, save as. And it's, uh, let's call this Bebop IMM. So it's gonna be all his stuff. We can start consolidating all of this stuff into one. Cool. Let's go out of edit mesh mode. Let's go out of solo mode here. And this is a good way to clean stuff out. There is a Z plugin. Oh, I probably don't have it installed. There is a clean tool master you can download and install, uh, but I'm just going to go through here and I'm just going to um, merge everything together. So we've got all of this stuff sitting out here. I think we're fine. Those are all the nano mesh brushes. These were a curve brush, correct? Yeah. No big deal. So uh, let's do a Z repeat it. So I'm going to go in here to Z plugin and we're going to say so you repeat it. So on this thing here, we're going to go and see if we have a clear mask. Great. So on all these things, everything's showing, we're going to say clear mask on all. And they're actually, I think there's a Z plugin subtool master that do that as well. And then we can go to uh, group mask, clear mask. I think that'll work. Or we could do group visible. And then we'll say do that for all. So now every single subtool is going to get one polygroup. And then again, that got rid of my nano meshes. Not a big deal. Uh, we're going to go down here to merge visible, delete all. And let's go ahead and save this as our streaming turtle power. And then here, call this O2. And that should clean him out. I mean, if we want to really go crazy, we could export this as like OBJs and bring him back in. Um, but you know what, while we're out here, while we're out of here, let's go into Pixelogic Download Center. We're going to go to our ZBrush plugins. Let's go ahead and grab some of these. I always forget that while I'm at home, I could go ahead and do this. Layer depth is kind of interesting. Uh, Nano tile textures is a good one. These uh, panel loop presets, clean tool master. We were just talking about Z repeat. We have IMM extractor. I think we do have live boolean master, dynamesh master, turntable or key shot, IMM draw size. I think that'll work. So let's go into here, and then I'm gonna make a folder on my desktop here. So new folder. So into this folder here, I'm going to take these and I'm going to say 7-zip extract to their respective folders here. And let's go ahead and, so there's an install folder. So these are the things I'm going to be copying into my ZBrush file. So go to your ZBrush 2019 folder, C program files, pixel ZBrush 2019. We're going to go to Z startup, Z plug 64. And then we're going to say clean tool master. Go ahead and move that in there. And then under Dynamesh Master, install. Move that in here. And then IMM Extractor, install. It's a folder in a Z script. Move it in there. We can go ahead and replace. 
layer brush depth. Sorry, this is really exciting. Live Boolean Master. Nano Tile Textures. If you want more information on that, I have a, there's there's a, a YouTube video on, I think Ask ZBrush that has it, but I also have it on my YouTube channel, we did it. Okay, there we go, we're all caught up. Restart ZBrush. And ZBrush takes over my computer, there we go. Let's go ahead and move this down. And again, sorry if I get backed up on my uh, comments here. Uh, my custom menu keeps disappearing and forcing me to re-import a custom UI. Um, it's, uh, that, that's weird. Are you, do you mean like uh, pieces of it are disappearing? Like on uh, here, I, have Z, I don't have anything in Z-spheres, but everything else is showing up. However, if I go to a primitive, I keep having things disappear. Or if I go to a Z-sphere, I have a bunch of things disappearing, but now I have a bunch of Z-sphere stuff. Um, you're custom, like if your custom menu is completely gone, uh, after you make it, make sure you go to preferences, config, store config, and that should save your custom menu. Um, that I don't know about. If it's if it's just you're missing some things, that just means it's context sensitive. So you can't run polygon operations on a Z-sphere. Uh, you can't run Z-sphere operations on a polygon, and you can't run a lot of things on a primitive. So that could be why. Uh, Do you ever try to sculpt or create concepts in Oculus Medium in VR? I have. Um, it was a little uncomfortable. Of course, I only did it once, so that's probably understood. Um, haven't really had a need to go back, but it certainly looks interesting. Let's go back to streaming here, and we'll go over here to our Bebop Blackout 02. So you can see it also uh, dropped a lot of size down, so we're down to six meg on this guy. So now we can go through, and since we made a polygroup for everything, we can simply go down here to uh, split, group split. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and hit X symmetry. Turn on anything if you want to go ahead and like set your um, dynamic. Oh, you know what? That's fine. Let's not turn on dynamic, but let's... Let's go down here to Mesh Integrity. We'll say Fix Mesh. Maybe that was part of the problem. There was some nasty uh, mesh going on in there. And um, OK, so now we should be able to go to Group Split here. And now when I did do a Fix Mesh, it may have broken out a bunch of like little things here. I'm not sure. No, that looks about right. You know, maybe it was a hair going nuts. Let's go ahead and delete that hair. Maybe that was what I was having a problem with. I still got a cool look. Let's go ahead and save this. So block out 02. Dang. Now we're down to 3 meg after we get rid of the hair. Okay, so this should be a little bit more stable. And now we just need to go through here. And so now you can see, yeah, you can use a curve brush with uh, IMM brush as your uh, squares here. Then we can go to uh, our brush menu. So hit the comma key, go to brush, go to IMM. And go over here to our A, B, Bebop, I, M, M, hit M, and we'll grab those uh, bullets again, Income, Nano Mesh, Polygon Ball. Go ahead and drag these out. They go the other way. Like so. And then now, I mean, hell, I think that's fine. And then same thing over here. We'll hit M and just grab that, or you can just tap that one up there. We'll Alt-Tap this one, and we'll just drag these back out. Back where we started, nice and clean. Cool. Let's see. Um, is there a such receivers plugin where if you move one part, the other parts will follow? Like if you did a pinch, a real life cloth, if not like Marvelous Diner simulates a whole mesh, but like a sculpting one? Uh, not real accurately. It would be, um, <clears throat> oh, like a simulation? Uh, well. I mean, kind of. There's a uh, B, C, you can go to, uh, what is this? Curve snap surface. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and make some cloth here. 
and then if you want you can grab this one and have it kind of follow <laughs> maybe I mean it's not uh, great uh, but that's something you could check out um, and then it, once you have this you can always uh, tap off and isolate this top one here delete hidden and then you could you know zero mesh to whatever you want and then go ahead and Q mesh this down or we could extrude polygroup all here go ahead and flip that's kind of a clothy thing um, you could also like use a deformer maybe I mean it's not I don't think this is what you're really asking but you can go through here and then now you can like let's say control alt mask an area and then this will kind of have a softer fall off although in reality it's probably not a whole lot different than this going through here with your move brush so I don't have a real good answer for that one cool have a good time at work Steven uh, cool thanks for the kind words Tom yeah uh, like bad bud said it's um it's a little bit it's not it's not like uh yeah a cloth simulation where you can pull a corner and pull it around and have it and do a nice simulation wrinkle um did any cool stuff in houdini recently not recently but i'm keeping an eyeball on them i think they've got some cool stuff coming out soon so i'm gonna eyeball it hey from new bronzefuls i need to always head down, down around that area when i go to san antonio uh, it's probably a bug it disappears completely from the UI. Sometimes when I start up ZBrush, I will lose my custom menu and I just restart ZBrush. But it's that's pretty rare. If it's happening all the time, then I'm not sure what that is. That's really weird. Cool. Alrighty, so uh, back here and okay. So what else we gotta do? Um, okay, so these pants, I am gonna thin his pants out a little bit. These are looking a little bit thick. Oh, also sub tool. Let's hold down Shift and turn off our poly paint. And you can see how when I'm sculpting, this little cursor kind of follows. If you don't like that, it's under Preferences, Edit, Turn Off Align Cursor to Service. And that'll go ahead and um, kind of do that. I'm going to go through here. Let's do an Inflate. And I'm able to do that. It's a little bit helpful because I have capped um, edges down here. So it's a little bit easier for me to just kind of go through and Inflate. And then now I'm actually going to make his legs. I'm going to thin his legs out quite a bit. In the cartoon, he doesn't. he's not a real bottom heavy guy which is fine and even uh, you know and when you see the movie I haven't actually watched the movie but I have some reference from the movie I probably should watch the movie and then uh, you can see that he's got a much different body type than in the cartoon so we're gonna stick with the cartoon a little bit like so okay um let's go ahead and block in the hair so we had uh what we did was we did a morph target for the hair and then we did fiber mesh we can go ahead and let's do something like this let's hold down shift isolate that and then we'll um actually on here if we do an auto reorder i have a feeling the body's going to be at the top oh wow those tusks are really heavy and then uh, the head so auto reorder goes uh, heaviest to lightest that's an interesting way to go ahead and uh, organize your subtools. So now, now I just have to go through and fix his body here. Okay, something like this. And also, not that we'll see it a whole lot, but I'm going to go ahead and um, again just kind of work on these forms a little bit here. That's soleus and gastronemius, and we'll go ahead and again we're just looking for our volumes here we're going with our clay brush actually let's go into our um, standard brush let's crank that intensity up just a bit and then we'll uh, crank our lazy radius up a bit under the stroke menu there we go again around this side out and if you uh, like the last live stream we went into I think we went in do we draw any anatomy or do we just we just sculpt it out I think we drew I could be wrong my memory is not what it used to be, obviously. And we'll go in here with our Damien standard brush here. And actually, I'm going to check the mouse average on that. Yeah, that's four. 
some somehow I left my mouse average up on eight. I think I was demo demonstrating mouse average, and then I stored a config, and then I noticed that my brushes were being real laggy, and then uh, saw that I had mouse average on there. And then this big strap, longest muscle in the body, unless I'm mistaken, um, goes all the way to that anterior superior iliac spine there, all the way around the leg here, and then attaches, I think, to the all the way to the tibia, if I'm not mistaken. Let's look at my my model here. Yeah, that looks right. So these are fun. These guys detachable. You can pop their heads off. Now this one's got the magnets. My other one at work has um, has the ones where the tubes where you have to pull it out. Uh, but that's always good, quick, in the round reference. And then, okay, so anyway, yeah, so now this strap goes here. It's actually not this one. This is your medialis. And again, why am I going through and detailing out these legs when you're never going to see them because he's always got pants on? That's a good question. I guess just because it's fun. Okay, so uh, yeah, we got this. And the, the whole point of that was to go in here to merge visible. And then we're going to go in here to insert that merged copy. And this merged copy here, I'm going to go ahead and just dynamesh that together. So now we've got our merged copy. We're in solo mode now. So because again, we had, let's go ahead and uh, X symmetry. We don't need it that high, I guess. There we go. And I'm going to go here to smooth stronger. So what we're going to do is we're going to block out that Mohawk and then we'll replace it with fiber mesh later. I just, I just want a representation of it. So we're going to go through here. I'm going to grab my trusty reference, which is, again is this guy right here. And we're just going to go through and I'm just going to mask. And you know what? Let's just go all the way down. That's fine because we can um, we can do some interesting stuff with this. So okay, let's do this. A couple different ways we could uh, skin this cat, but we're gonna hold down Control Alt, tighten that mask up a little bit. We're gonna go to Geometry, Edge Loop, Mask Border. That'll give us a little bit of a cleaner cut through here. And of course, since we had two poly groups, we have to go and grab both of those. There we go. We'll hit Control W. Let's go ahead and delete Hidden. Now I might you you could just you could have done an extraction when you were doing, when you just had it masked. If you go in here and you extract, yes. Uh, that'll give you a preview of what it would look like. Uh, you can also delete hidden and extract. You can also, um, you can extract from a mask, you can extract from just polygon thickness. But when I have a simple shape like this, sometimes it's useful just to go in here to zero measure, depth size down to zero half. And this just gives me a little bit more control. And just to kind of help it out a little bit, let's go to the front here. And it looks like the front of his head, and it seems weird to be like, well, why why box model a mask when you can just dynamesh and you can sculpt it? Uh, when you're just trying to control just basic shapes, um, a lot of times, let's go ahead and pull these corners out. I was using uh, Move Accu. I have a brush with that with Accu curved on so I can pull out the corners like this. Uh, not that you can't do that with the Move brush because it's so simple, but on sculpted meshes, boy, does that come in handy. So here, it's a ZBrush half. There you go, you just got a strip down here. And so now we can go through here and we can say extrude polygroup all. And we'll go ahead and I guess, actually, you know what we need for reference is ears. There we go. So now, it uh, looks like the top of his head here, let's hold down control. I'm going to mass lasso, hold down control alt. Um, if we want to flatten these out, uh, we can. We can. Tr you can use the clip brush. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to Z uh, scale this, and we're going to just kind of do that a little bit. And now we can go in here with our move brush and kind of. And then though, to smooth these transitions out, one thing you can do is you can go down here and you can do. Let's do a group by normals just to get polygroups on all sides, and then we'll go ahead and um, actually before we do that, when we did this one, we kind of overlap these. Now you're going to see these get a little overlapped here. Let's go ahead and move those out. We'll help out zero mesh a little bit. Let's go ahead and smooth. Uh, hold on shift. I have smooth stronger turned on, so I'm going to turn down that a little bit. And actually this, this back here doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and just smooth all these. 
and then brush auto masking we have a mask by polygroups um, if you wanted to just control these by single polygroup but I think this will be fine okay so now that we have this we can go up here to um, group by normals and then all of this will be one normal but really I'm really looking for let's hold down alt and then we'll just make these all one polygroup here actually hold down alt start painting let go of alt and then as you tap all you'll just get a new polygroup so now when I do a polish by features I'm gonna do close circle just to maintain my volumes a little bit more and then that's the result I'll get again I don't really care too much about this back here oh I guess I had an extra polygroup there if you want to replace those yeah you can just control shift click both of these hit control W or you could have just alt tapped over there and hit shift I know that was a really bad demo but and we'll go through here and this will be our block out. So of course you could have absolutely dynameshed and masked and just kind of sculpted this shape, but we decided to do it a little bit different. Nothing's wrong, it's just different. There we go. So we can hit Control W on this one. Let's go ahead and um, you know what? We could do a crease and then uh, crease those edges a little bit, or we can go down here to geometry, turn off the smooth modifier, divide it a couple times, turn it back on, hit Control D, and then that'll give you this result. And then now you can go through here smooth a little bit easier. And we still have um, subdivision levels. So we can always go back down to sub, sub, sub D level one. And at any point, always feel free to just dynamesh this result. It's not a deal breaker or anything. And it looks like it, it kind of has like a mullet that goes to a, uh, oh, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't see the back of his head a whole lot. Boy, that's getting annoying. Okay. And then down here, we can uh, trans transfer that um, top of his head to the sides here, just holding down. Uh, trim dynamic and there we go now if we want to uh, give me give him a little bit of a, a little ponytail here first we're gonna check our reference and make sure that it's not too long and also we can kind of flip it out a little bit looks like it happens right about here if you want to you know have a looser mass just go down in your subdivision levels here and then now you can kind of go through here we'll get that off his back just a little bit all right uh, okay, so right about in here, it kind of gets a little bit tighter. So we can go through here. Let's go back up in our subdivision levels. Hold down Control, Mask, Lasso. We'll take this one here. Let's go to go out of X symmetry. Go to Unmesh Mesh Center. Go back into Mass uh, X symmetry, and we'll just go ahead and shrink this down. And the other thing that we could possibly do, let's go ahead and actually we don't even do that. But we can duplicate this off. I was thinking we could like go down here, so just level one and like use this geometry. Um, actually, we might be able to. I think this will work. Let's do uh, delete lower. Yeah, we can use those loops. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and um, let's hold down control. Well, you can go to your Z modeler brush. You can hover over an edge and you can say poly loop, poly loop, poly group, poly loop. And I might have to use the mouse for this. There we go go through here and you can make these all separate poly groups if that's a little bit difficult go into your uh, control shift select lasso and then any edges you click will control shift drag to invert that and then you can just go grab these and then geometry modified topology delete hidden if this is a little heavy all you got to do is zero mesh half that'll maintain your forms and your shapes and then uh, oops zero mesh half that's size down to zero it's a little bit better and then we'll go in here to insert single edge loop hold down alt get rid of these ones and that'll be, we'll call that good enough. Now, one thing I do like to do, uh, then this one, I think it's easy enough to just do a close convex hole. Oops. Convex hole, there we go. All right, I guess I'm not gonna use my mouse then. One, two, control shift, control W, crease PG, crease level of two, smooth set of three. And then in order to move that out, you can say Q mesh, polygroup all or extruded work fine. Hold down shift. And if you want to make it thicker, just go to this side and just hold down shift and just pull along those surface normals. You could even go through here and you could do like polish by features if you want to smooth that out. And that'll be our hair block in. And I think that looks about right. 
go in here with H polish maybe, hold down Alt, let go of Alt, hold down Shift, and again we're just getting those volumes. And then at this point, after doing all that hard work, you could go through and you could say, let's go ahead and say, uh, we're going to go ahead and Dynamesh. Resolution looks fine. Already has Dynamesh turned on. So now we have, it's all nice, evenly quadded. In fact, let's go ahead and drop that resolution down quite a bit. And then we'll go in here with maybe our Damien standard. We can go ahead and um, I'm just going to let go of Alt, tap Alt, and you can go through here and you can kind of break this up. And then on this, um, this hair down here, let's go ahead and do an insert or uh, inflate. Now, depending on if we want to do super real, hyper realistic hair with maybe fiber mesh, or if we want to do um, stylized hair, it doesn't really. We can do either one, but this is just going to kind of tell us uh, what where the edge flow is coming from and like where this kind of transitions here. So we're just kind of dialing in the overall volume and the overall shape, like so. And then you can also go in here, BS snake hook, and you could um, you can kind of go through here and you can kind of break the silhouette here a little bit. And doing this symmetrically probably isn't helping his overall aesthetic on hair, but that's okay. Again, we're just looking for volumes here. Alrighty, so how's everybody doing? Mm -hmm. Uh, Denza says, why don't you use reload custom UI button instead of restarting ZBrush? Um, reload custom UI. Is that under custom UI here? No. Interface? No. Um, let's see. I don't know. I don't know where that is. Uh, I'm concepting a ZBrush but don't have a good workflow for quick UVs and quick textures. Can you do a rundown for what to look for and do? Um, yeah, uh, in fact, on my YouTube channel, on my playlist here. So we do, let's see. Install, okay. So here's the, the Houdini Game Dev tool set will give you quick UVs and quick um, meshes. However, I mean, you can use Zero Mesh or you can use like, it's basically any other that I've found is um, it's either zero meshing for your organic shapes or there's a quad, uh, I forget the name of the plugin, but you can kind of quad out geometry or you can decimate it down essentially and uh, voxelize, which is essentially just doing uh, Dynamesh and then just decimating it down. The Sci-Fi Pistol series, the, uh, I thought there was a, yeah, the speed modeling and texturing and I'm trying to think what else we took into, and in my uh, full playlist, there's a playlist full, uh, that, that one we go into, it's all about, um, yeah, speed modeling and texturing, sci-fi pistol series, by the time we get down, it's like auto UVing, now here's the thing, is it's not going to be, is it going to be great UVs? No, is it going to be great geometry? No, um, you can maybe use Houdini for that, or you can use, um, I don't know, you can use anything you want to, really. Uh, but this is how we go from concept to uh, painter, iRay, or exporting out to whatever you want. Uh, in fact, in my full video series, we also did that. Let me just look through here real quick. Um, live stream full episodes. I don't even know what... Uh, is there a view I can do that's not cubes? Oh, live stream full episodes right here. So if you look down through here, you'll eventually start seeing some robots pop up somewhere. Like we were doing, uh, or this book right here. So here's where we took, we just concepted out like a book and took it through Houdini and then threw it into Painter for quick material, threw it into iRay rendered out, that kind of stuff. So any of those goes through that. And also, now that I saw that, 
I'm going to ZBrush, 20, ZBrush uh, Summit 2018. This is my ZBrush Summit presentation. This one is just 96 videos on my YouTube channel, just going through demos. Uh, but if you watch the Certain Affinity presentation, this is basically all about uh, just doing quick, quick concepts and getting them into engine animated, running around in a play test, um, and those kind of workflows. So that might be of interest to you. Cool. Um, <laughs> how's the dog doing? So we got whiskey and we have Pepper. Uh, Pepper's getting, she's getting up there in age, but she's still hanging. I mean, she's still puppy style. And then whiskey. We just did their DNA tests for fun. And uh, boy, they're both super, super mutts. Um, hey, from Australia, love your videos. Love, uh, heat, learn heat was awesome. Um, what is the Accu Curve? That's the second time today I've seen it. Yeah, so this one, I didn't use it in the best example, or essentially it's like, okay, we have a poly mesh 3D. Uh, we go down here to initialize and we say Q cube. And then we go through here and you can use the move brush and you can just pull around uh, these vertices. Uh, however, I can also go into move with Accu turned on and then now you can pull around these vertices. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, but if you had a mesh that was more like this and this mesh was say dynameshed, Let's raise that resolution just a tiny bit. Uh, and then you're going through here and you're like using trend dynamic on these edges and you're dynameshing and you're going through and you're like, oh, you know what? I want to pull out these corners. Uh, this is where you can use move Accu to kind of pull out to a point like so. And then you can go back in here with like your H polish and you can knock these back down. So it's uh, useful when you're just kind of ideating and just trying to get some tight corners you can go through. Of course, in this case, you could also have just gone through here and um, clip these curves back, obviously, to make corners. Uh, so pick and choose your battles. But in some instances, we're clipping. Uh, let's go in here to bend arc. Where clipping may not be uh, super available to you. I don't know, sometimes it's useful, or when you're just like concepting something on here, it's like, hey, we've got a, we got a little thing here, and then you're concepting, you're concepting, and let's go ahead and move that through some stronger up, and you're like, hey, you know what, let me go in here, I want to, I want to just tighten these corners up a little bit, that's where move Accu can come into play, and then like, we can keep these corners soft, but then these corners up here, we can make them harder, and then we can go in here with our Damien standard brush, and kind of tighten up these transitions, and then go in here with our H polish, hold down Alt, and then you can just, because this is where like clipping may not be the most um, worthwhile solution. Now, of course, you're probably going to want to raise this resolution while you're working on this type of mesh. But now uh, you can do, you can use Move Accu and H polish just to kind of get that result, and then this can kind of fade off into a softer transition. So Move Brush. And then move Accu, we can pull these corners out. There we go. Like so, something like that. Um, let's see, so uh, hard surface modeling and sculpting. Uh, it's very easy to be creative in ZBrush uh, and then re apologize in Maya with Quadraw. Uh, but my topology uh, can't make a super clean edge any more sculpting zbrush any tips so like when i'm doing ideation for hard surface stuff uh, i'll get it as close as i can but you're right when i go and rebuild this for like a sub d mesh or just to get a refined surface that's not this um, i mean quadra i mean I, quadra is just fine you can there's moto max maya blender all of those uh, programs, even ZBrush, if you don't mind using ZSphere's, uh, it's just basically like rebuilding this mesh into something useful because now that, you know, I've been creative, quote unquote, <laughs> I'm not really, I haven't really been creative, but you know, I'm figuring this surface out and it's easy enough for me in ZBrush. And the other thing I like about ideating in ZBrush is I don't get caught up in my topology where it's like, well, I had lines here, so that's where I'm going to put this shape. I don't have any lines anywhere, so I can go through here and I can just be like, you know what, this is going to work for this shape. I don't have to think about um, like, oh, you know what, because I'm, normally when I'm box modeling, I'm going to have lines coming up here. So I, uh, if I wanted to cut into shape, probably it would end up being right there. Um, as instead of that, I can go, you know what, I actually want it to be offset right here. 
and then you're much more likely to go through and just do make that choice as opposed to letting your geometry dictate you know where things need to happen on your mesh so it's just a way to kind of keep you um, more designy and less box modeling of course if you're a box modeling wizard you know do whatever you want you can go through and clean these things up but then uh, you know this is also destructive so like if you're if you're looking for like speed and you know exactly what you're doing then and it's something this simple then yeah absolutely uh, but at the same time it's also a lot easier for me to go through here and just make arbitrary cuts based on you know what I'd like to see uh, you could do that I guess you could do the same thing with booleans though you could make your overall shape and then you could just use booleans and then use like hard mesh or the equivalent to go through and do a boolean and then transition these to fillets and stuff so I'm not gonna certainly tell you how to work or anything like that I'm just saying this is just one method to go through and make your decisions first and then let's go through here I'll put in like a cylinder and we're not working in symmetry here but again I'm not worried about like well I had an edge there so that's where I'm gonna put the cylinder I don't care. I don't care where that stuff is. I'm just making decisions based on what I need. And then later I can figure out, you know, if I need to go through and change that or something like that. So. Uh, problem I face when I'm ready to model for a 3D print. When I merge everything, then Dynamesh, the mesh gets blurrier and I keep on increasing the size of the Dynamesh, but it uh, stays the same. So one ZBrush plugin you might use is Dynamesh Master. So in here you can tell it how many millions of polygons and also down here under additional options, try using the auto scaler. It'll basically scale the Z subtool to what it needs to be to get the poly count, polygon count and then scale it back to your native scale. So turn this on and type in like how many millions of polygons you want. Um, you can also Dynamesh and then use, you can turn on Dynamesh with project turned on that can be a little bit slower you can also just dynamesh it and then use subtool project to get your details back um, you can also instead of uh, merging everything and dynameshing uh, you can do a so for example if I have this mesh here and it's like okay I want to merge these together so I can 3d print it um, instead of doing that you could do W you could just do a boolean mesh. I'm just going to go here and say uh, remesh by union. And then now these are stuck together. But I didn't have to lose any detail because it's just a union mesh. Now this kind of super crappy mesh probably isn't going to play nicely um, with your 3D printer. But if you have nicer meshes, maybe this is a better option. Give that a shot maybe. Uh, when I zero mesh with a new algorithm, I sometimes get weird topology results in the corners like holes or super dense and distorted quads on thin geometry with simple shapes. Um, how would I fix that? Yeah, and that, I don't know if I'm going to have a real great answer. It's, it's, the thing about zero measure is it's doing a lot of stuff. Uh, it, it, it's, like, uh, this type of shape here. So we'll say, um, let's see, zero measure, that size, I guess, leave it up. Uh, let's do half, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Yeah, let's turn on skin shader for so you can see that. So like, I mean, it did a pretty decent job considering, especially on this side. Um, this one is getting a little squirrely, you know, so you can, you can go through here manually and you can say like, let's, let's weld uh, points here and then let's help it a little bit. So we'll say, let's collapse this edge and this edge and maybe this edge and maybe we'll slide this one here I don't know let's also make this a little bit more obvious those are very similar polygroups so you could clean it up manually and not ideal um, but it's also fairly simple to do if you can get something like that to kind of work uh, and this is okay. Uh, however, you can try that and then keep zero meshing and see if this side seems to be doing okay-ish. Uh, this size, this side maybe. All right. I mean, this is this is probably about as good as it's going to get, honestly. Delete edge like that, and then we can go down here to geometry. Uh, let's 
go down here to our panel loops and we'll go ahead and crank up that thickness, polish down. There we go. And we'll say like crease PG. I got all these things. So you can go ahead and split those out and make your little sci-fi whatever. Um, yeah, it's 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 helping it out quite a bit. But sometimes, yeah, it is going to start like going down, and then it's going to start splitting apart. Uh, at that point, you could just keep going down, go ahead and extrude, and then just bridge. It's clean up work, but uh, something from Houdini. Uh, I need to get back into making stuff. I haven't made anything in a really long time. Cool. Um, a question about deformers can figure out the difference between reset full reset and delete well, let's see so if I take this one here control shift a and we'll split hidden shift D W let's go to unmesh mesh center and the deformer we need to kind of angle it so that it's gonna work there and then if we do a deformer here and we say control alt and we move this out so we've deformed it and then we go in here and we say okay um, let's reset it does a reset if we do a full reset. I wonder if that has to do, I'm trying to remember. Let's go in here to our project primitive. I want to say it's a project primitive thing where we're going to go through here and we're going to project this primitive through. And then we can say, oh, you know what? Let's reset it. And it kind of stays there. And then a full reset. Okay, yeah, let's try that. So I think that's what it was. I could be wrong. So we're going to do a project primitive here. Actually, it's a really terrible shape to do that on. Let's hit uh, Control Shift, Delete Hidden. And if I'm going to run a close holes operation on this, it's not going to do a great job because it's going to have that kind of sunken in look. But I'm going to go down here to double temporarily. I'm going to help it out. I'm going to say Bridge Edges. And we're going to say, hey, ZBrush, keep this and this, and then keep this and this. And now feel free to close the holes however you want. Or you could go through here and you could say, let's go to Insert multiple edge loops, we'll drop a polygroup right down the middle of here, and then we can say close convex hole, and we'll go ahead and cap this side, and then we will cap this side, and then we will go down here and we will say collapse here, here, and here. Maybe not, let's see. Boy, I did something bizarre. Let's turn off double. Close, convex hole, looks legit, let's say collapse edge, there we go, I don't know what that was all about, and then we'll collapse this edge down, control W, control W, there we go, something like that. Um, so now what were we doing, oh yeah, project pro, so we're going to hit W, go in here, and we're going to say project primitive, and we're going to say you need to make a little thing out here. And then from this, we're going to say, um, boy, I don't even remember how to use project primitive. Oh yeah, right. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say, where is that at? Accept. So now we've accepted this, and then we're gonna go up here, and we're gonna come out here, and we're gonna make another project primitive, only this time we're gonna go to our Boy, you can tell me it's been a long time since I've been in here. Primitive type. Let's go ahead and make a uh, cylinder type thing. And we'll go over here and we'll say blend down to zero. And we'll hit W. And we'll move this around. And we'll go ahead and use this maybe to cut into that shape. Okay, okay. So we'll say um, accept. And then that goes all the way out of um, Project Primitive. However, if we go down here and we say, okay, give me a new Project Primitive. And we'll go ahead and say, accept. Not going out of the tool. And then we'll say, new Project Primitive here. And we'll go ahead and scale this one down. And we say, accept. Now if we go in here and we say, reset, it goes down here. And then if we say 
full reset. Hmm. I'm not sure. I thought reset was going to keep it like in that area, but it looks like a full reset does that. I'm not positive what the hell that does. <laughs> um, oops, looks like I lost my place here. Sorry. Um, oh yeah, UV master. So yeah, getting the auto UVs. Uh, if you Z remesh something, use UV master, obviously, uh, in ZBrush. Uh, and that, that can, if you have a simpler mesh, it should work fine. Let's go ahead and delete all out of here. Let's go back to our shape here. Cool. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Let's see, decimation in Z-Remesher is more accurate than only Z-Mesher. Uh, yeah, and also, a Z this is also another point here. If you have, uh, say, Cylinder, make Polymesh 3D, uh, keeping your edges crisp, too, so we'll crease and turn on Dynamic, and then we'll go through here and we'll put in a um, sphere, and then we'll say Split Mass Points, I guess Subtractive, Boolean Mesh, so having nice crispy shapes and then going down here to our boolean uh, dynamic subdivision make boolean mesh this where is that you mesh this is going to be a lot more successful if we go down here to z remesher and we just say detect edges and um, that size down to zero uh, with these clean edges it's going to be a lot more successful than if we were to go through here and say um, Dynamesh, and then run a polish by features. So now, if if this is our working mesh, and we're like, all right, zero mesh, do your thing. I'm gonna say zero mesh or detect edges. That's gonna have a real hard time. It's probably not gonna detect detect anything. And then you can go through here and you can make polygroups here, but like to have zero mesh do a razor sharp, very precise job, um, booleans is how I would do it. I guess, yeah, it's not going to do anything. Uh, shortcut for grow the polygroup when you're hiding. Um, so if you have a polygroup here, and growing is Control shift x to expand, Control shift s to shrink, um, Control shift tap to just have a polygroup visible, and then Control shift drag with select rect to invert that. <laughs> No problem, Dev. Thanks for showing up. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. Is there a place download perfect quad spheres with different resolutions? Um, I think they do have a quad sphere. If we hit the comma key, remesh all. Oh, under project, they have a polysphere. So I wonder, you know what, let's do this. I don't want to lose my project here, so I'm going to go load tools from project, and we're going to go into, come on, monitor. Go to ZBrush 2019. Um, ZBrush data. Sorry, ZBrush 2019 Z projects. And then underneath polysphere ZPR. Oh. It's, it's an older project, so you can't do that. Load that up, and I think it does actually have um, a perfect sphere. However, I guess you could do maybe something like this. We're under initialize Q cube. Let's drop this resolution down to one. And then if you say subdivide this. It's not a perfect sphere, but in order to make this a perfect sphere, is there a, there's a spherized brush. There's not a spherized deformer, is there? Hmm, no oh, spherized. Yeah, spherize that out. There you go. So now you have a perfect sphere with all the resolutions in the world. So you've got, here's a dynamic one, dynamic three, Dynamic 4, Dynamic 5. And so if you want any of these resolutions, you just delete lower. And then you can capture this as a brush, and then you can reconstruct, 
delete higher, capture this one, so reconstruct, delete higher, capture this one, reconstruct, delete higher, capture this one. Maybe that'll work. Uh, would you take this project all the way to painter and render? Uh, ideally, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't use deformers that much uh, either. Uh, just the simple ones. Uh, I, I, I don't really get real super complex. I don't really make anything at all, actually. But um, uh, using Blender for sculpting, but our laptop is seriously struggling with it. Does anybody know if ZBrush Core is any decent for game character artists? It's got a lot of really simple uh, tools in it. If you want to kind of do a spin through that. Oh, look, there I am streaming. Uh, if you go down here, here's the ZBrush Core playlist that I made. Uh, I have it. I've used it. Um, I haven't ch I haven't uh, stayed current with it, but it's got all the basic stuff. I wasn't going to do a video on ZBrush Core, but then I looked at their feature set, and their feature set's pretty small. So um, you c don't expect to be like doing almost anything we've done <laughs> other than like dynameshing and sculpting. Um, there's, it's missing a lot of features, so. Uh, but for a game character artist, I mean, an investment in ZBrush, I mean, I, it, it should pay off. Um, you know, hopefully. I, I mean, I bought it early when I was a student, and, um, and I mean, I know their new subscription model, maybe it's easier to kind of maybe lower that barrier to entry, but I'm not going to be at the ZBrush Summit this year. Yeah, it is. Seven o'clock now. We got another hour. Cool. Um, and the Q sphere is that? A, is there a Q sphere in here? Brush insert. Let me see if they had. They might have an IMM primitive. I don't actually use this, so that would be. So an octosphere, tetrasphere, polysphere. So here's a polysphere in here that's already had it done. So for instance, I'm going here to polymesh 3D. And then uh, BI brush insert IMM primitives, hit W, and then you can grab any one of these. So here's our polysphere, octosphere, icosasphere, tetrasphere, sphere, insert sphere. And it looks like this one's actually uh, the same deal. So you can go through here on this one, and then you say geometry, reconstruct. But you saw how it was, it was fairly simple to go through and make your own with sphere eyes. Cool. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Cool. Alrighty. So let's go back through here and let's see what else we need to make. Uh, let me get rid of all these windows here. Let's make those shoulder pads. Uh, and that's also going to determine where these things end up. I think I'm going to have to remove those. So first thing on those shoulder pads is we have a strap going from the inside of the armpit out. And it looks like it has a little, little bucket or a little um, knob on it. So again, when in doubt, you can use the probably um, BTO trans, uh, topology brush. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this guy, and uh, we have X symmetry turned on. I'm just going to use the power of Z remesher to go through and essentially just make a strap. And I'm going to over extend these straps just a bit so I don't have to worry about them not showing up where I want to. Hold down Control Alt, tighten that up a little bit. Again, we'll go back in here to um, edge loop mass border just to help Z remesher out just a little bit, delete hidden. You can clean these edges up just a tad by going into uh, masking. And you're going to see over here I have border groups increase on. So I actually have mask by features set to control B. So I don't have, to, all I have to do, I don't have to go into this menu. I can just turn off these. I can have mask by border turned on. Um, and then I can hit control B. And that'll go ahead and mask my border out. And the reason I do that is so that I can uh, invert that mask. And then I can quickly go through here. And um, it's actually a Dynamesh thing. You could pull these shapes in here, and then you can go through and Dynamesh. Uh, just, I'll show you that in a little bit. But what I'm doing in this instance is we're um, masking that border. Let's go ahead and grow that mask a little bit, invert that by control tapping, and then uh, again, polish by features, open circle, just to kind of even those edges out, and then Z remesher. And again, we can use our move Accu, pull those corners to a sharp edge, and this is going to help Z remesher determine what I want. Uh, and it's going to get a little confused in here, but we can help it out. So we're going to say Z remesher, that slides down to zero half. There we go. And then while it's doing its thing, we can be like, hey, don't worry too much about this theory measure. Like, this can be, okay, so also when we're um, 
holding down shift to smooth, you're gonna see on these edges, it's keeping them um, solid. If you don't like that, go down to your brush menu and do um, smooth brush modifiers, min connected, just drop that down to one and then you can do all those, but we'll go ahead and keep that up at three. So uh, now that we're helping Z Remesher out, figure figure out its life and how it's what it's gonna do. Again, just go through here and say, okay, Z Remesh, no big deal. Just maintain these forms and Z Remesher half. There we go. Pretty decent. Go through here, maybe do a little bit of cleanup work. Uh, and if you want to, you can also go in here to insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, and then if you want to put one back in, you can just insert an edge loop right back down the middle. Good enough. Got those, and then we go through here and we'll do a Q mesh polygroup all, just a little bit, and then on the insides, I'm gonna hold down Shift. And now that you have these, you can do maybe a uh, group by normals. Let's do a quick geometry modify topology mirror and weld. And then you can go through here and you can say, another polish by features and that'll kind of smooth those straps out just a bit. Yay! And then uh, crease poly group, crease level of two, smooth so div of three. And that'll give us a preview of what it would look like. Stop starting to sell me products painter. Okay, so we've got this. That was Corel painter by the way, sorry, not substance painter. And then we've got our body here, so let's go ahead and make those um, turtle shells. So if you're just trying to get your volumes out there, um, one thing you can do is you can take this body, you can duplicate it off. We can go down here to inflate negative one, and then you can use like clay buildup or clay brush and just go through here and kind of sculpt out uh, the volumes you're looking for. However, it is a fairly simple shape. So at the end of the day, you could probably go through here, use the topology brush and then go through and like just poly model where the shell divisions are going to be. I just keep saying that. This is what we're making right here. Uh, but sometimes it's useful just to kind of go in here and just determine like, okay, this is about the, the volume that I'm looking for. And if we want to, we can actually, let's go in here. Let's go to texture, import, streaming, turtle power, bebop reference. And then we're going to go down to there he is. Let's grab him. Texture, grab him, put him in the spotlight. Now you can use this not only to check your proportions, which is also super useful if you want to go through here and kind of line him up and be like, okay, wow, his head is way too small. Uh, we can go ahead and fix that as well. But if we're making shoulder pads, we can kind of line up a shoulder pad here. And then go in here with our standard brush, turn on RGB, and then you can just paint that detail right on there. And that's pretty close actually. So uh, let's go ahead and go to RGB, drop that intensity down, color, fill object, and that's about what we're looking for. Um, you could also maybe, this might work, let's go down here to masking, and we can do a mask by alf color, mask by intensity, hue or saturation, let's try intensity, and then we'll go back up here, we'll turn off our poly paint, we'll hold down control alt, no, let's try this, we'll get this to work. Uh, we have our poly paint on, so mask by intensity, and then go over here to mask adjust. Let's turn down blur, apply, adjust profile. Let's focal shift this way. Nope, let's focal shift this way. A little better. Let's reset this. Let's try this. There we go. So let's 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 use that method. So instead of this. Um, Dynamesh here, let's go ahead and be like, okay, this is essentially where I want my shoulder pads to go. So we're gonna go ahead and hold down control. And we're gonna mask this. And again, you could use topology brush, you could put on a, a cylinder or a sphere on there and you can slice through it. However you wanna make this shape, you do you. We're gonna do it this way. And I'm not gonna get the edge loop mask border in my custom menu here. Make sure there's no hidden surprises there, that'll work. Um, good, uh, delete hidden. Oh, just lost it, there it is. And then um, mask by border, control tap to invert, and we'll go ahead and do polish by features. So uh, at this point you can go ahead and like um, Z remesh, you can also just do 
uh, mask by border, control tab to invert, and then you can just pull these down, give us a little bit of wiggle room, and then just redynamesh this. I'm going to go at a higher resolution. So now, this is again, we're just, we have a proxy sculpt we're kind of playing with here. So instead of that, let's go out of solo mode, let's hit shift, oops, let's go ahead and pull these out so that they're the right size here. And then this is where, you know, you want to make sure your volumes, you want to make sure your overall uh, shapes are good before you start detailing. You're going to regret it if you go too fast too far. You know, so you really want to go like, okay, this is where that side goes, and then it's going to go down through here. And I don't know exactly where those uh, turtle brakes are going to be, but we're going to dial those in in just a second. I'm just making sure that the overall size and bounding box for this volume is what I'm looking for. We can, we're going to rebuild it, don't worry. But just kind of determining where that's going to end up. Now that we have that, we'll do Shift Z again. Uh, if we would have saved our camera view, um, we would have to do this again, but we didn't. That's okay. So now that we're working at a higher resolution here, we're going to make sure it's the right size. In this case, uh, I'm not too concerned about that because we're going to have to resize them a lot anyway. But do as I say, not as I do. Go through here, something like this, I think. And then again, uh, standard brush RGB. Go ahead and paint that on there. And just to get me back here a little bit faster, let's go ahead and do a movie show. That's under your movie menu, show timeline, and then Shift Z to get out of there. And I think that'll work just fine. And we're going to dumb this down a little bit. Color, well, let's not dumb it down a little bit because it's going to make the masking a little bit easier. So now we can go in here, uh, mask by intensity. Let's go ahead and turn off our poly paint. Sorry, colorize. And then uh, this mask adjust we just had, we'll go through. This looks a little bit too much. And then now we can go through here maybe and do like a deformation inflate, or you can just manually go through here with your clay brush or your inflate brush. And you can say, um, maybe clay brush here, 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 and here. And then you can hold down alt. You could also go through here and do panel loops if you really wanted to, like everything you mask, you bake your edge loop mask border. Um, that's probably a little bit beyond what we would need. Just showing you a couple techniques. I hope we go through and unmask now where you can kind of just dial in uh, the shapes you're looking for. But at the end of the day, really what I what I need is just my poly paint here. We're going to go in here to, let's go ahead and turn off show. RGB, uh, drop that, Z in, uh, that intensity down, color, fill object. Okay, standard brush, RGB, color, fill object. Unmask, sorry. Uh, color, fill object. I just need an indication of where the stuff is. And in fact, um, let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry and delete hidden. By the way, uh, if you want to work on one side and not have to like keep constantly mirroring, mirroring and welding, or if you want to like go through here and so if you have both of these here and you know that if you want to like clip this side, it's going to completely destroy that side and then you have to like mask the side, blah, blah, blah. Um, what I like to do instead is delete hidden and then go down here to our array mesh, turn on array mesh, lock position, lock size, reset X mirror. And now you can just turn array mesh on and off this little button here. And that way you can just like turn it off, work on it however you want, turn it back on and then there it is. And it's an instance too, so you can go through here and just model on one side. And it's also better because when I go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and it's like, oh, I want to run a deformer on this, we can say, okay, do a deformer, and it'll just work fine. Uh, however, if these were, say, Array Mesh, um, Make Mesh, so now these are both one object here, and we're in X symmetry, and it's like, okay, we're using X symmetry. Oh, now I want to use a deformer on this, and you go in here to deformer. Uh, it's going to tell you to turn off symmetry, and then it's also going to want to do across the entire body here. So just another reason why array mesh is the way to go. There we go. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and turn array mesh off here, and then uh, hold on control shift. And now uh, we have a much better idea of where we want this to go. Also, what we can do is we can 
let's let's work on this a little bit. And I know where it needs to fit on the body, but I'm going to go ahead and work a little bit on this uh, independently from everything else. I'm going to turn on L sim, and we're going to do a mirror and weld in the Z, and that'll give me kind of both sides. And then we can turn on X symmetry, transform in the Z. So now we're working across this symmetry here. And now we can just go through here and be like, okay, this turtle shell is probably going to be like this. You could even go through here and like uh, with RGB turned on, oops, not with our move brush, our standard brush RGB. Uh, you can go through here and you can be like, you know what? I think this is about where my shells are going to be. Um, this one looks a little large. So we're going to maybe shrink this one down a little bit. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make sure that the other ones are also compensating for that move. So while you're still loose, while you're still figuring stuff out, um, it's totally OK to go through here. And even up here, let's say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make this one one piece here. And then we'll have an extra turtle shell piece here. It's kind of morbid that he killed a turtle for these sh shoulders. Or are these like molded plastic? I hope he was humane and didn't actually kill a turtle for these. So now we're just, again, just figuring out where our stuff needs to go, making informed decisions before uh, we do anything final. And then uh, these are going to be the inset pieces. And then the overall turtle shell is going to be, it looks like it kind of goes up and around and then up and then around. And then if I had to guess, uh, this would actually go up again in here, maybe. So if we want to kind of build that in, boy, this is killing me, this monitor. <sighs> okay, so we'll go through here, and then this is what we're looking for here, and then we can hit C, something like that maybe, and then go back to darker color. So this is what we're going to make. And it's the overall volume, it's the overall shapes that we need. So let's go ahead and do that. So to get a very precise, um, shape out of here. You could go through and manually retopologize. I think for the base shape, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use zero measure. And then for these shell pieces, I might go in. We'll see how it works. So we've got this thing here. I'm going to go ahead and, and we can actually work on its own sub tool. But let's go ahead and duplicate it off just because I always want to have my reference piece. And then again, one more time, we're going to go to RGB, color, fill object. Make sure it's white. And again, I'm just trying to get the overall view, and then I can see my mask a little bit better. So on this one, we're going to say, OK, zero measure. And you could go through, and you could slice this, but I think this will work fine. I want your boundary to be this. And you could also possibly do, let's go ahead and do a um, edge loop mask border. Isolate this one. We'll do an auto groups. And then we'll grab both of these and hit Control w and then Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden. You could also do poly group it. Uh, if you've played around with that, that's under your Z plugin. There is a polygroup it option where it'll go through and give you polygroups on all this stuff. You could also do polygroup mass. You could do polygroup. You could go through and paint these things. Uh, we'll keep it simple though. Okay, so with this one, we don't need the poly paint on anymore. And we're going to go through and we'll, again, we'll do a, um, let's just mask our borders here, invert that, and we'll just go ahead and um, polish by features. Okay, and it is kind of loose, and then these things are, you know what, let's just go with it. So we have uh, X symmetry still turned on in the Z, so we're going to go zero measure. That slides down to zero half. And I think that's going to work. Uh, the other cool thing is we can have, we ha we'll have an edge loop around here that we can play around with. Uh, if we had made it a little bit smaller, actually, we could go through here, we could do Q mesh polygroup all. And then we can go through here and we can pull these out. And then we can go through here and add like a little lip. So when we go through um, and start modeling, that's something we can consider. But we'll go ahead and just leave it the skin for now. Uh, if you need to fix any of these volumes here, I think that's fine. So that'll be our base shape. Um, so in that sense, like I, like I said, if we had gone through and made this a little bit smaller when we pulled out an extra edge ring, Although we can go ahead and do that, it looks like. Let's give it a shot. Let's go through here. Let's go to say, um, hold on. Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden. We'll go to Q Mesh Polygroup All. We'll turn off Solo, 
actually we'll just turn these two back on. So it's like, okay, actually the edge bound is through here, but I can also go through here, Cumish play group all, hold down shift, and then kind of pull out an extra um, length here. And then through here even, we could say, let's do insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation. And we can go through and we can kind of pull this up, kind of round that off a little bit. And then even through here, we could even soften this a little bit by going in here to like a bevel edge loop complete. We can soften that transition. So that way uh, we have that kind of turtle shell here. Let's hold down control shift, control shift S, oops, control shift S to shrink. We'll hit control W, make that all one polygroup. And then now if we have just this one selected and we go down here to our crease menu, we can say crease, and then your open border will be creased, and then now you'll have uh, that type of look. I think that's kind of what we're going for. And then now we need to go through here, and we can still pull along that surface normal if we need to. So let's go back to our original shape here. And let's uh, start plotting these shapes. So for these, um, you could go through and start like, um, just masking where these are going to go. And I'm thinking I'm going to start here and then maybe I'll go through and do a little bit of cleanup with some, uh, what's it called? Z-sphere. So these are the overall shapes we're going to get. Actually, you know what? To help us out a little bit, let's hit uh, Control D a couple times. And then uh, we don't even need to, we only need to work on half of this thing. I was thinking we could go through and we could slice these shapes, but that might be more trouble than it's worth. What I'm really looking for is just a little bit tighter detail so that zero mesher knows where these corners are or more accurately, so I know where those corners are. And then on this back piece here, looks like it comes down, yep. And then comes back in and then around. I'm going to do the whole thing too, where I just polygroup these and then just make my life a little bit easier. This actually looks softer in the concept. Actually, this whole thing looks, this top one actually looks a lot softer. And that's okay, because when we go to um, rebuild these, it's going to automatically allow me to kind of average those vertices a little bit, so I can go through and play with the, it doesn't have to be this geometric. I'm over, over geometric geometricizing. <laughs> I'm positive that's a word. For now, and then we'll hit C. Good. Oops. Um, hold on, Control Alt. Sorry. And actually, if you don't want to look at these lines, just turn the line off. That might be a little bit better. You can see a little bit better. Control Alt, and then now, I know this is super duper exciting, but bear with me. All right, so we've got these shapes here. Wait for my computer to come back. There it is. Um, let's go ahead and do our trusty edge loop mass border on without subdivision history. And then we can isolate this one here. Let's go back to select rectangle and we'll say auto groups. And then now we can go through here and we can say this one, control shift drag, delete hidden, control W. And now these are all one polygroup here. Let's do, actually, let's do another auto groups. Isolate this bottom one here, delete hidden. So now we've got our overall shapes. So now let's turn line back on. We have X image turned on. Let's see how zero mesh handles these. So zero mesh or depth size into zero half. Now if we need to do any cleanup, we can. We can do Z modeler or we can go into our um, Z spheres. And you can also do this one by one if a push comes to shove and it's having a really hard time. Um, you can just go through here. So it looks like through here, it's really trying to maintain these things. So I'm going to go through here and just help it out maybe. Like, don't worry about any shapes that you're getting through there as your measure. Well, maybe that one. And we'll say slide edge and then slide point. There we go. So now this could work just fine. Let's try another zero mesh half, cross our fingers. Is that too loose? I think this will be fine. I think this is our sweet spot. So let's go through here. And then uh, again, it's kind of even, and you can also hold down shift. Uh, or again, you can go into your mask border, invert that, or don't invert that in this case. And then you could do a polish by features, just kind of average those a little bit. 
So now uh, we have these th shell pieces and we want to extrude them up through that. So that should be fine. We're going to say Q mesh polygroup all, pull these up and then let's do, actually let's do this. Let's go pull these up and then I'm going to go to the sides and I'm going to hold down um, shift to push that in and then we're going to go into Q mesh here and then now we can go to Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift. Um, let's do this. Pull this out, tap alt and now Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift. Now we can hit D for dynamic. Uh, you can try doing like a crease polygroup, crease level of one, smooth set of three maybe. And then let's keep playing with that. I want to get a little bit more. I know I should have made it smaller. Let's go down here. Insert, single edge loop, hold down Alt. I'm going to get rid of all these top ones here. This one, let's go through and we'll do a poly poly group. Oh wait, uh, collapse poly loop here. There we go. So now it's smaller, but I do want to have uh, Q mesh to get that volume back, and then I do want to go Q mesh. Oh, Q mesh get my volume back, and then Q mesh poly group. I'll hold down shift, and then now when we do a crease, let's just do a crease tolerance here. We may have to go through and crease some of this stuff a little bit better. That's a little bit more what I was looking for. Let's do a crease PG and then um, crease level of one, smooth so do of three. And then maybe we can go through here on the sides and we can do like a crease edge loop partial. And just go through here and kind of pick some of these corners we want to maintain. That's not going to work. Fine. Crease, edge. And these corners we want to kind of maintain a little bit better. And we can always put in control loops. Uh, I try to avoid using control loops unless I really, really need them. <laughs> and I'll go back to a white color here. Something like that. And then now uh, we do have our dynamic preview turned on and I can go through here and I can just kind of match. Come on, monitor to come back. Match this like so. Also, uh, so I'm gonna try to go through and move these things and they're gonna just all wanna move together. Uh, you can go in here to BT uh, move topological somewhere in there. Uh, I usually just have my brush menu open. Oh, it's getting worse. Um, auto masking and then topological and then we can go through here and now only objects that are close so we can go through here and get these distances a little closer to what they should be and it also looks like through here these could probably stand to be creased here And we were doing our Bowser, um, so we did a, on one of my other live streams way back when, we, I think we worked a little bit on um, one of Bowser's kids, I forget his name, but he had a shell. I can pull him in in just a second. I want to say we just dynameshed and kind of did it that way, which is totally reasonable. Actually, it looks like this needs to be... And you could also crease these corners here a little bit too, if you wanted to like go through here and tighten this up. So remember you can just go through here and you can like crease these or add control loops and build those. But now uh, that'll maintain that corner a little bit better. And then this one will say crease level of one, smooth so div of three. So it's not too obvious here. And this might be an uh, instance where maybe move accu could work. And then again, Let's go in there and help it out with some 
increasing. Alrighty. Actually, let's increase a little two of these ones. I don't know. We'll play with that. And if you want to make these thicker or thinner, uh, it is just Q mesh poly group ball and just hold down shift and pull right along that surface normal. And uh, you can play with that a little bit. So hold down shift, turn everything else back on. And then again, if you want it on both sides, uh, I think, does this, did this inherit our array mesh? Yeah, it did. So I'll tap this one, turn on array mesh. And then, uh, yeah, if we want to make this bottom part here, let's hold down uh, control shift, control shift X to expand, control W, make that all one polygroup. And now we can go through here, Q mesh polygroup all, and then hold down shift and just make those thicker. Maybe even um, let's go polygroup, poly loop. We'll grab both of these, control W, and then Q mesh, hold down shift, make those a little thicker as well. Alrighty. Whew. Shoulder pads. Let me catch up here. Yeah, I do stream early, but I can't think of any better time. I certainly don't want to stream after I get home. Um, and I don't really have a whole lot of other options. So I know that if I get up early, I can kind of dictate a little bit. He's got a gigantic rib cage. Hold on. Uh, I think his rib cage actually sternum. I think it'd be more like back in here. Oops, let's turn off the yet here. Let's hold down shift and turn off all the colorize. Probably be a little bit higher. Um, I think you missed my question. I probably did, sorry, I'm scrolling fast. Um, yeah, shout it out again. Topology brush curve is, you can move ZBrush Super Powerful 3 tool, but topology utility is really hard. Um, so for the topology brush, BTO, I can go through here and I wanna say there was something you could do. Brush curve. Hmm. Was it zero mesh or BZ? Zero mesh or guides? No, that was just another way to draw curves. Yeah, um, there might be a way, because these are just curves, and you can drag curves along a surface. But, well, let's try it. Let's say brush curve. This is going to be really weird, but curve multi-tube. And then now you can go through here, and you can move these things around. And then let's see what happens when we go to BTO. No, that breaks. Uh. As so we move those around, I can't delete that. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody somebody might have a little hackier answer. Cool. Motion designers community this is word to say videos help me a lot. Great, awesome. Um hopefully I'll be able to get back into doing more videos. I'm trying. I've been in the management track for a while, so trying to get that set up. Extrude the mesh, lots of ways you can go to watch a video about Z Modeler. Dynamesh sphere, dynamesh with 0.5 poly count, so divide several times. Okay. Uh, geometry HD. Uh, Paul Gabriel is going to be your guy for that. I don't mess with geometry HD, but HD. He did. Um, I want to say. Did you know that? I want to say he went through here and did like two hours on Geometry HD or something crazy. Um, I don't know if that was it or not. Oh, was it this one? I have notes on it, but since I never use it, um, you'll have to look that up. Um, cool. Uh, this is ZBrush 2019.1.2. Uh, yeah, and so yesterday, and I mean, it's mostly me talking a lot, so while blocking him out, 
Uh, yesterday we blocked them all out, and then today we had to redo some work because uh, it crashed a little bit. But if 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 I was to sit down and block out a character, um, and just not have to sit here and talk about it, uh, I would say you could be able to block this guy out in a couple hours, and then go through and just refine um, these meshes. In fact, um, we could go ahead and start scaling these head pieces up. We'll we'll see if we need to match that reference. Yeah, I don't know what her deal is. She's <laughs> Her mom's working out in the gym, and uh, she's barking. <laughs> uh, modeled a face when I sculpted the right ear. I forgot to turn on symmetry and sculpted the whole ear. Now how do I mirror my right ear to the left side? So that would be... You can do mirror and weld, but if you have... Um, let's see. If you have subdivision history... Oops, cancel. Just give me a tool. I hate that. Female head. So I go through here, and it's like, okay, uh, I have symmetry turned on. I have nice topology I don't want to ruin. And so I'm going to go through here. I'm going to, um, oops, I accidentally turned symmetry off. Didn't realize I did it. I hit Control D, and I hit Control D again. And I'm going through here, and I'm sculpting, and I'm changing this ear. Go through here. And also I have back face masking uh, available to me a little bit faster than usual. So go through here, it's like, okay, I made a change. I'm like, oh, I didn't get that change, and I have subdivision history. I don't want to ruin my geometry, because the other option would be, yeah, you can just do a quick um, mirror, mirror, and weld, and you could do that, although this seems to be off-axis. Uh, the alternative to that would be to go down here to, um, oops, to our subdivision history. Go down here to our um, deformation, and there's a smart resim. So I like to go through the subdivision levels. So I'm going to say I want to keep this side. It doesn't matter which one. If you if you don't want that pointy ear, you can just keep this side, and then do a smart resim. Or I don't know what she is barking at. Smart resim, and then go up one. Now you could go to subdivision level three and do it, and it'd probably work just fine. But. Um, there we go. So now we can turn on X symmetry, and now we have uh, symmetry. And you still have your subdivision history. <laughs> um, There's a way of converting creases to edge support loops for to export for other software that doesn't use creases. Yeah, you should be able to. So if we go in here to our, and that's uh, that's how I prefer to work. Um, I hate like going through and like sub modeling. I'd rather have hard edge, hard even in Blender, have my hard edges just tagged and then go through and do a modifier, like a bevel modifier on all my hard hard edges, as opposed to building in a ton of control loops because that's super super duper destructive. Um, so if we go through here and we say crease, um, you can go in here to your geometry um, crease menu and you can turn on a bevel width. So you can go through here and just kind of dial this in. You can also crank up the resolution. An alternative to that one is also if you go through here and group by normals, you hold down control, you can bevel width out the other way. So this one, you bevel width in, and then you hold down control with polygroups, and you can bevel width out a little bit. So whatever works for you, that'll take all of your creases and put a little bevel on there. May not be perfect, but... avoid pinching when not creasing a complete edge loop that gets a little bit into rebuilding your I mean that would be if you want total control just re you'd have to rebuild instead of creasing you'd have to go through <clears throat> you could do this but then you'd have to go through and um, for example if we say let's do uncrease all I want to say we want to do just like a crease on these and then um, you can put enough a bevel width here uh, you'd have to go through and make sure that these things subdivide properly, uh, and that's just box modeling stuff. Not real fun. Cool. Uh, oh, uh, like Lee says, uh, Maya does how you can, I think FBX, if you export as an FBX or use GoZ, I think you can throw it into Maya and it will have it marked as uh, creases. Uh, Zebra more is CPU bound, I better invest a high core high core count CPU than GPU. Um, I wouldn't say high, high core count um, for Zebra specifically. I have, uh, for example, here uh, I'm using the 2990WX, so I have a 32 core processor. It's great for like uh, distributed rendering tasks, uh, but it's not 
I would say if you're using just ZBrush, um, get the 3990 or lower core count, uh, but higher clock speed. Uh, same thing for Marvelous Designer. You don't, you can't really distribute uh, a cloth sim. So having, but then again, if you ever want to throw it into Keyshot or you ever want to like encode a bunch of videos like I do, then having all those cores is certainly helpful. So trying to find that sweet spot. If you do need a lot of cores, but maybe not this many, um, consider the 2950X. That might be a better. Uh, yes, there is snapping in Z modeler, but it's IMM brush. Um, there's also a plugin you can throw in here. I'm trying to remember where it is. Is it under subtool? I thought I downloaded it. There's a plugin you can look up that um, you can like snap things around based on uh, relative distance to other objects, but it's not great. <clears throat> have you sculpted in a blender? What's your thoughts on it? I haven't bothered. Uh, not that it isn't good. It's just I, I have ZBrush. So uh, what I'm doing in Blender is stuff that I can't do in ZBrush. Uh, and then I'm working my way back to just doing kind of everything. Um, curves stay attached to the subtool you drew them in. So if you wanted to tweak them with the curve tool and then split the tubes, you go back to the initial subtool and still use the polish brush, I think. Let's try that. That's a good point. So let's say BTO. And then we got our topology brush. And it's like, oh, I want to move these topology brushes. And actually, let's go ahead and start making geometry. Ooh, that's probably going to mess some stuff up. Let's try this. B, curve multi-tube. And then we can go through and you can move this out. And then we can say, let's go hide point. And then delete hidden. So we've moved them. And then we still have our topology brush. Oh, it works. You're a genius. So. Um, Geo 3D art, you could do that. Now let's see how fancy we can get. So let's say we have this and then brush curve multi-tube. We can go through here. We can move these curves around however we want. We can even extend these curves. We can go in here to hide point, delete hidden, BTO, and it comes back. Well, look at that. There's our hacky solution. Does seem to be doing something a little bit weird. Oh, you know what? It seems like everything we moved, hide point, delete hidden. It's fine here, so if we just tap, ah, it gets rid of it. Why? If I hold down Alt and drag, it only keeps that one. And then if we control, if we do go up here, it keeps these ones. But then anything we moved, oh, you know what? All of these, gre all these intersection points it gets rid of when we go back. So as long as you don't cross over, it looks like it'll work fine. Brush curve multi-tube. Delete it. So yeah, as long as you don't, let's see, as long as you don't have any cross sections, um, you can do this. So hide point, delete hidden. And then these are going to make new points. Oops, BTO. So, yeah, a little bit of functionality there. Uh, every time I use zero mesh after extracting mask, it awful geometry. Um, wait, hold on. I might have missed some here. Cool. Uh, I'm trying to make a helmet in Zebras. Don't know how to make sharp edges in Z Modeler. I would just be creasing. The stuff we've been talking about just recently. Um, every time you use zero measure after extracting it, awful geometry. That would just be. I mean, I don't. I hate extracting with a passion. Uh, I'm not a big extraction fan. But if you if you insist, you can go through here and you can say like mask this, and then um, mask this. And then if you want to extract this. The first thing you're going to notice is we hold down Control Alt, and then do this, and we go in here to Subtool Extract. It's going to be pretty garbage mesh, so we can say Extract and Accept, and then what you would have to do is go through here, and you could say uh, Polish poly, Polish by Features, and then just clean those edges up. However, you're going to start losing that sharpness in there, so if you want to maintain these, you got to go through here and maybe run a crease edge. If you're working with very high polys, you can also go through here with this um, mesh here and you could simply just do like control shift and slice to make a new poly group there. 
and then um, oops, same thing for down here. You could also alternatively go through here and just mark these ones. This one's simple enough to where this is doable. Um, let's see, let's try that again. Always forget Alt and then let go of Alt. There you go. And then you do a crease PG and then and then as you do uh, polish by features, it'll go ahead and maintain those uh, edges for you. Uh, and then if you wanted to do a zero measure, you could say keep edges or now that we have polygroups all over the place, you could do a zero measure, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, down size down to zero half, and then you'll get pretty decent zero measure results. Um, but yeah, extraction by itself is just garbage. Uh, in fact, instead of extracting that from just a mask, what I would do, uh, let's go through here and I would say do a slice circle. And then I would do a slice rectangle. And then I would say slice curve. And this is going to be like where I want these pieces. Now all of these pieces here, oops, I kept the one, two, these are the ones I want, right? And then instead of going through and extracting and getting thickness, just do a zero measure on this. So we'll do a half depth size down to zero. Don't need to keep groups. And then now we can just go through here and do a Q mesh. And that way you don't have to deal with extraction. And you get much nicer geometry. And you get a lot more control. Auto groups here. And then you can do like crease poly group, drop your crease tolerance down, D, crease level of two, smooth set of a three. Looks like we need to uncrease these ones. Something like that. So that way, oops, got a little extra piece over there. I try not to rely on extraction unless I have to. Bertram A, uh, you know Houdini, but you're learning Blender. Uh, I'm learning Blender for Eevee and looked at Previs. Uh, I'm learning Blender just as a modeling tool and then also rendering, and Blender can do everything. So I'm using Blender as my destructive modeler. Semi-destructive, I mean, you can still do uh, non-destructive modeling for sure, but uh, Houdini is gonna be my procedural tool. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, keep your eyeballs out on new chips. Those are they're getting good. Um, after creating a Boolean subtool from fairly complex light Boolean, does this destroy any chance of smooth subdiv afterwards? Um. No, it depends on how complex you get. What I tend to do is, um, like we did before, like if, if you if you can zero mesh it, which essentially would be like, I go ahead and crease, and then cube, and then honestly, like even when we're doing, um, let's do crease tolerance here. I mean, I guess now that we're doing dynamic, I guess that would work. Here, actually just go mirror weld and X and then W. Control drag this out. Split hidden. Subtractive. Yeah, and if if it starts getting okay, so let's like turn on X symmetry here, and we have this one selected. You might have to kind of pick and choose your battles. For example, if we go in here, let's do another cylinder on this side here. I'm gonna crease here. So I'd say this is our complex shape, but we want to get even more complex. Like we want to go in here with some of these um, IMM Boolean shapes and start playing around with like really complex shapes. So what I would do is just get your volumes first and then we can say uh, make Boolean mesh dynamic sub D. No, uh, yeah, make Boolean mesh dynamic sub D. And then this one, uh, we have X symmetry turned on and it should be able to just find uh, detect edges, depth size down to zero half and then we'll get a pretty decent result. If it doesn't find all your edges, you can manually go through and do the whole polygroups um, 
group by normal thing. So or, or even in here, do um, you could have done polygroups on other all either side. Uh, let's say group by normals. That might help it. And then you could just tell it um, keep groups from groups down to zero, zero, mesh half. So this could be your mesh here. And then um, now you can just do like a crease PG, crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two or three. And then now you have a sub D mesh you can go through and model. Um, so yeah, you can get sub Ds back. Now, as far as like these transitions between them, it's not quite as nice as like hard edge or Maya hard, hard modeling or whatever it's called, or um, like Modo, you can do some tricks there. Uh, but what we can do here is let's do this. Let's isolate this one here. We'll delete hidden. We're going to say close convex hole. And we're just going to get this back to just a normal um, cylinder in here. And then through here, we can modify these transitions. So we can say bevel edge loop complete. And then if you want to, you can even do, um, you can go through here. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could do this, but like maybe insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. And you can like push these in or out and, you know, kind of get a little bit of a, a fall off in there. And then if you want to start doing a little bit more complex stuff, I would suggest doing mesh fusion instead. So it would be like BI brush insert um, booleans, go through here, hit W, and then we can just swap out. We can steal some of this stuff. So we'll take this one, for example, hold down control shift, isolate this one, and we'll delete hidden. We'll hit brush, create insert mesh new, and then we'll go back to our U mesh here that we've modified. If I want to put this detail in here, all I got to do is just drag on this poly group, control drag, control drag again, and let's turn off uh, geometry, turn off that smooth modifier. So that way uh, that mesh is built in. It'll go ahead and, um, and if you want to do it inverted, you just hold down S. So let's go ahead and move this a little bit, just a little bit towards the middle here. Actually, let's also do a weld point. So it looks like it's doing something weird. Okay, so uh, brush insert mesh and then hold down alt and that'll do um, so it's cut in control drag control drag again and then now again you have that mesh built in so now you can go through here and you could do like a crease poly group or whatever uh, this area right here needs to be looks like it needs to be helped out and this would be one of those things where it's like yeah ideally you'd have an edge loop cut around here so that's where um, box modeling would come in but we could do a, a bridge two points here at least to alleviate some of that stress collapse edge like so it's not going to be great but it'll be better than it was uh, is there a way to exclude subtools from live boolean default all the subtools are subtracted I guess maybe new folders you can use new folders and also start groups so when you're doing this and we want to say let's go down here to split similar parts here so we have this subtractive subtool and then we have the subtractive subtools. Uh, if we want this to be subtractive, we can say this is a start group. And then these ones, we don't want to be subtractive. We want them to be their own mesh. We can turn on live Boolean. And then we go ahead and do our make Boolean mesh here. You're going to see that we're going to get two uh, poly groups. We get this Boolean one and then this one. But of course, you yeah, have folders. You can control that as well. Cool. Uh, clean topology UV compared to Houdini procedure all lower as UV if animation is not an issue. If animation isn't an issue, then it's basically a decimation operation, which Houdini will do great at. Um, but, you know, a nice clean topology, that could be a little bit trickier. Um, I don't know. I'm still working on that. Every A lot of people are still working on that. So that's the good news is a lot of the people a lot smarter than me are working on that. Cool. Um, transpose mesh, transpose all, move multiple subtools to Z sphere rig. What's the best for posing a character? If you have all of your subtools uh, at a very low resolution with uh, subdivisions, then subtool or um, transpose uh, transposing with Z spheres is fine. Uh, that'd probably be my preferred method. Uh, but yeah, if you don't, then yeah, just going through and transposing uh, everything. Or you can just make a rig for it if you have like a game resin bakes, but that's a little bit outside of the scope of like doing a 3D sculpt. Um, 
So yeah, we didn't get quite as far as I wanted to, but we answered a lot of questions. Uh, we can keep going with this guy. We can start doing um, like real clothing and maybe get his shoes blocked out and, you know, get his head the right size. Because when we, we looked at the uh, reference, we noticed that his head was really, really big in this reference here. So here's his body, give or take. Of course, his head's kind of lowered down a little bit. So eh, you know what? It might not be as off as I think. Maybe just a little bit bigger. Uh, the auto method just doesn't compare to the manual approach. No, but you got to pick and choose your battles. In an auto method, I can get something done in 15 seconds, and maybe it's good enough, uh, as opposed to spending three days and have it be 6% better. So, you know, kind of pick. Cool. All right, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Um, what else? What else? Uh, I'll be stream. I'm going to try to stream a little bit more. So maybe uh, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll post on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, all the usual things. If I'm going to stream again this month uh, before the next first Thursday and give you guys a little bit of a heads up. Cool. Alrighty. I'm going to head out.